This is Detective Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a coming-of-age comedy drama film called Dude. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. On their way to junior prom, best friends Lily, Chloe, Rebecca, and Amelia are all getting stoned. After enjoying the dance, Lily and her boyfriend, Thomas, who also happens to be Chloe's brother, go out to talk. Now that they're alone, Lily openly laments about how she can't imagine that they're leaving school soon. Later that night, Thomas, Lily, and Chloe have a serene time at the mountaintop, just chatting and being with each other before the girls drive home. Neither of the girls have any idea that this is the last time they can be with Thomas, as he is soon killed in a tragic car accident. One year has passed, and the girls get stoned again before arriving at school. Just two weeks before graduation, Lily meets student council member Noah. The two of them discuss the preparations for prom, which has kept Lily so busy that she's skipping classes now. After that, Lily meets with Chloe, who tells her that she's going to find out this week if she made the cut to NYU's waitlist. Chloe's quite pessimistic about it, so Lily encourages her, saying, You're going to NYU. I'm going to Columbia. We're gonna be life partners forever. Then they bump into their friends, Jared and Sam, and they ask Lily to spread the word about their coming party. Thomas' supposed 19th birthday is a tough day for everyone. As Chloe reminisces about her brother, she and her parents still mourn his passing. At school, the principal urges Lily to delegate some of her prom tasks to someone else, but she refuses to as she wants to keep busy. Chloe gets out in the middle of a class and heads over to the field. She sits on a bench, which houses a sign that says, In Memory of Thomas Daniels. There, she plays Thomas' last voice message to her over and over, but she's soon interrupted by Sam. He consoles the bereaved girl before asking her to prom, and though Chloe appreciates Sam's gesture, she doesn't give him a definite answer, since she's also planning to attend a pre-frosh event at UCSB that weekend. Meanwhile, Lily begrudgingly delegates some prom tasks to Noah, since the principal's constantly checking on her. To her surprise, Noah suddenly serenades her in front of their class in an attempt to ask her to prom, but she rejects him, saying, Prom is my prom date, and it should be yours too. This is the pinnacle of screenwriting, everyone. After class, Lily's in the car with Chloe, and she's telling her all about how displeased she is with what Noah did for her. Just then, Rebecca barges in to tell them about what happened to her in the library. So she was in the library when her teacher, Bemis, arrived. And since Rebecca digs him, she decided to dig into her pants in the restroom while fantasizing about her teacher. Tragically, she was caught wet-handed by some goth there, and while she acknowledges that Bemis is hot, the goth says that her fantasies are already occupied by Gore Vidal and Trent Reznor. While the girls are getting ready for the party, everyone, especially Chloe, gets surprised when Lily takes out a piece of cake. She hums a little happy birthday song to commemorate Thomas' birthday. No one knows how to react, so Rebecca breaks the painful silence by munching on the cake. Chloe, on the other hand, is unhappy about it and steps out immediately. The girls arrive at the house party, where Lily talks to Noah, who apologizes for embarrassing her in front of the class. She accepts his apology and informs him that she's going with the girls anyway. Despite her rejection, he still subtly asks her to be his date and without warning, Noah abruptly kisses her. The two of them almost make out, but Lily pushes him away, and instead, she tells him to come over if he wants to hang out before giving him her number. Meanwhile, Chloe is with Sam, Rebecca, and Amelia, when she unenthusiastically announces that she's been accepted to NYU. She feels like her mind's changing now, and she just wants to go to UCSB and be closer to her mother. Lily then shows up, unaware of the fact that Chloe was accepted to NYU, but she soon finds out that Chloe's going with Sam to prom, and this upsets her. Rebecca then makes a beeline to the bathroom, and she takes her sweet time covering the toilet seat with tissue paper, completely unaware that cops have come to bust the party. After Rebecca pulls out two tampons, one of which was mummified already, her friends barge into the bathroom to get her so they can leave. At school, while Sam and Lily are selling prom tickets, he points out that she's too dedicated to organizing the prom party. She retorts that wanting people to be happy and have a good time isn't a bad thing, but Sam counters that letting people have a good time by themselves is better. Lily then tells him off for breaking the bro code, seeing as he didn't talk to her first before asking Chloe to prom. Still, she forgives him right away. Later on, Lily and Amelia are in the car with Lily's sister, Olivia. She's ranting about how she got in trouble because their brother hijacked her paper on governments. And in the paragraph about oligarchs, he wrote, I like to sneak in and watch my dad take showers. Lily promises to confront their brother about it. When Olivia gets out of the car, Lily grows pensive for a while. She eventually asks Amelia if they're a mess because of their bad relationship, or even lack of relationship, with their fathers. The air between them shifts into something sadder, more somber. Amelia's parents are getting a divorce and Lily's father is never around. And after some thinking, Amelia surmises misses that it's either your dad messes you up because he's there, or he messes you up because he's not there. 
Back at Lily's house, she's telling her brother off for what he did to Olivia's paper when she receives a message from Noah, telling her he's nearby. She immediately heads out and lets Noah in her room. While he's tuning her guitar, Lily begins to take her clothes off in front of him, and with his ever-growing attraction towards her, he can't help but leave the guitar in favor of making out with her. But for Lily, she's just fulfilling her promise to him from the other night. After that, Noah attempts to invite her to his house so she can meet his parents since he already likes her. Unfortunately for him, Lily has no plans of dating someone in the last week of her senior year. The next day, Lily and Chloe are having a soccer game, and they're up against Noah's ex-girlfriend. Said ex is pissed about Noah and Lily getting chummy, while Noah's there to cheer for Lily's team. Soon enough, Lily's team wins. That night, the girls are getting high at another house party. Chloe uses the opportunity to talk to Lily and tell her that she isn't 100% sure that she wants to go to NYU like they planned, because she thinks that having some space between them is a good idea. Lily is surprised to hear this, and though she doesn't take it well, she just pretends that all this is okay with her. While trying to compose herself, Lily meets another guy from school, and the two of them end up making out. But the guy can't contain himself, and he disgustingly forces himself on her. The ordeal left Lily disgusted and confused in equal measures, and she gets out of the room, feeling lost and troubled. Unfortunately, she can't find her friends because they've already left without her. The next morning, the girls go over to Lily's house and Chloe immediately apologizes for leaving her. She explains that they were looking all over for her, but someone told them that she had already left. Still on edge over everything that's happening, Lily goes on a tirade about Chloe's fixation on UCSB and how they'll all probably go their separate ways and go through life alone. She even references last night as a preview, saying that one day, you get messed up and confused and suddenly, you're in a dark room with a sweaty guy on top of you, but none of your friends will care, because they won't be there. The girls immediately grow concerned and ask Lily what happened, but she dismisses their worries and shifts her ire back to Chloe, accusing her of trying to find new best friends. And when Chloe is unmoved by Lily's accusation, Lily asks her how she could be friends with someone who didn't know Thomas. Try as the other girls may to convince her that they'll still be best friends, Lily isn't having any of it. She snaps at Rebecca for always having her head in the clouds and at Amelia for being boy crazy. But Rebecca incredulously reminds her that she's got her head in the clouds because she's worrying about paying for loans in school, things that have never even crossed Lily's mind. As for Amelia, she reminds Lily that she's the one who goes nuts over guys, her dad's gone, and the guy she was in love with died. Irritated and overwhelmed, Lily walks out on them with Rebecca reminding her that this is her house. But with her gone, Rebecca Rebecca asks Amelia to drive her to a coffee date with a potential roommate. Despite how ridiculous Lily's being, Chloe still follows her and confronts her, saying that she's too smart to be acting this pathetic. She brings up her absurd cherishing every moment shtick and her prom fixation along with Lily's weird memorials. Bluntly, Chloe tells her that ever since Thomas died, she's become oppressive, but Lily reasons that she's just trying to get them through Thomas' death. Chloe, however, sees all this as a psycho girlfriend act. After their confrontation, Lily leaves for a drive. She's starting to remember Thomas again when she suddenly sees Rebecca happily talking to a potential roommate in a coffee coffee shop. She starts mocking them, but an officer soon approaches her for illegal parking. He notices the donkey bong in the back, making Lily panic, but he assures her that he's not going to ruin her life forever. He's just going to mess it up for at least a week. Word gets to Lily's mother, Jill. And back at home, she orders her daughter to smash her bong. But Lily refuses to, saying that Donkey Bong's been with them through high school and that Thomas even smoked out of it. She insists that she was just sad driving. And when Jill questions what she means, Lily tells her all about how Rebecca has a new roommate and how Chloe doesn't want to go to NYU. Jill doesn't see anything wrong with what Chloe's doing, but Lily insists that she's making a huge mistake and ruining their lives by ruining the friendship they have. Jill finds her completely ridiculous and even says that she understands why Chloe wants to get away from her. After asserting that Lily thinks she knows everything when in reality, she knows Jack, she orders her to smash her bong again. Disappointed, Lily just hands Jill the bong before storming out. That night, Lily tries to reach the girls, but they all dodge her call. After calling Chloe's mother though, she finds out that the three of them are all together, which hurts her even more. The following day at school, while Lily's keeping herself busy with her prom tasks, Noah appears to offer help. She unexpectedly accuses him of still being involved with his ex, and though Noah explains that they aren't together anymore, Lily doesn't believe him, so they argue. Later that day, while Lily is choosing what dress to wear for the prom, her brother barges in to annoy her. While he's wearing one of her dresses over his clothes, he asks Lily what's the matter, and when he keeps seeing through all the excuses she's making, she finally admits that her friends hate her because she's been sucking big time lately. For all of her brothers, little wisecracks, he correctly surmises that since she knows things are ending, she freaks out and tries to hold on until it gets weird waiting things out. He encourages her to adopt a new mindset and reminds her of when their dad left them, when they were about to go to Disneyland. They didn't end up going, it messed him up for life. But life 
still went on. Meanwhile, Jill leaves a voice message to her ex-husband to inform him about their daughter's graduation. She invites him to come if he has the time. Prom night comes, and Lily arrives feeling lonely. Her loneliness gets spiked with anger when she sees the knob who forced himself on her. To make matters worse, Noah's dancing with his ex too. She then leaves and lies on the bench in the field, thinking about the moment Thomas confessed his love to her. Lily soon grows surprised upon seeing Chloe there wearing a casual outfit. The two apologize and forgive each other. Chloe says Thomas being gone is going to hurt forever, but she can't take mourning something that could have been. Finally, she reassures Lily that no matter what happens, she will always be her life partner. Chloe says sorry for ruining the prom, but Lily declares she is her prom. With that, they join the others to have their senior prom. At the after party, the same boy is hitting on Lily again, so Chloe comes up to him and kicks his nuts, humiliating him in front of everyone while Noah and his date argue. Lily sees Noah's date walking out on him after the fight, so Noah approaches her to apologize for making her mad the other day. Lily accepts his apology, and they both have fun. The girls are the last ones left at the end of the party. Before leaving, Sam takes a photo of them. During their graduation, Lily delivers her valedictorian speech, and after the ceremony, they gather at her house to celebrate. Bemis shows up with a flower for Rebecca, confessing that he likes her, while Amelia is still caught between her divorced parents. As soon as Lily sees Noah arriving, she goes on to kiss him before joining her siblings for some picture taking. In the end, the girls are looking at the sky. They're all too aware that things are changing around them, and that may be the case, but their love for each other will always remain the same. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.